All right. So you guys, you, the only thing you have to uh, measure the activity of Eve is looking at PCU numbers. Because that's the only publicly available numbers you have to, to see how Eve, the activity in the Eve is progressing over time. And <clears throat> here's a graph of the PCU numbers. And as you can see, we're doing fine. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> but all pun aside, uh, what I want to do here is I want to give you in-depth uh, look into activity in Eve and uh, maybe settle some, um, some worries about uh, declining numbers and stuff like that. Uh, first thing, of everyone who's logging in, I, look, I made these, this graph, just a simple graph of, of things I, I took from the event uh, metrics we have. And we can see that of everyone who logs in, then 84% of players warp and 80% dock. About 72, 73% use the market. And 40% join fleets or create fleets. 30% warp in NoSec. 26% uh, use acceleration gates. Um, we have about 25% to warp in low sec. Uh, 22 percent mine, 20 percent run missions, 15 percent to industry, uh, 13 percent to warp in, in V space, wormhole space, uh, thir 13 percent of people do PvP. Everyone thinks Eve is, is just for PvP, and, and so many people might think this number would be higher. But this, the PvP here, is just if you if you aggress another player in any way. Uh, then we have 8.5% of people doing the hacking minigame. Only 1.5% uh, to uh, incursions, and then followed by uh, courier contracts, around 1%. And if we take production and destruction in EVE, I've done, I've done a lot of things on, on, on these two metrics, you can see that this, you're not seeing the same trends here as on the PCU. There is certainly, there's equally as much stuff being destroyed in EVE now compared to the past three years. And there's not, there's not that much less uh, of production being done. And production is pretty much on par with how it was in 2012. There are some spikes here and there. Um, but if we then normalize by the unique logons, then we can see that Activity per unique logon is actually going up. So these that those of you who are playing, you're contributing to the Eve sandbox a lot more than than before. So this is certainly a good thing. Uh, the the economy is definitely live and and kicking. Um, as I said in in the 07 show, we're gonna do the economic reports uh, monthly ones now. And these are some of the graphs that might make it into the economic reports because these are all procedurally generated. So running them for each month is, is just a matter of running a script. Uh, <clears throat> this is a total production by, by region and taking just the, the, the value of the items being produced. Uh, the forts is around uh, 16.8 trillion uh, produced in September 2015 followed by Lone Track, Citadel, Domain. And we see a lot of the, the big NOSEC regions there as, as well. And that's definitely a good thing. And then on the destruction side, you can see uh, the Citadel at the, at the top there. You have Tama and, and a lot of uh, faction warfare NOSEC there. And, yep. And Forge of nat naturally is there as well. And, uh, and of course, the NOSEC regions as well. This is, yeah, nothing really surprising there. With the total mining value, it was 1.34 trillion mined in the forts in, in September. And in, only in the forts, and, and the domain loan track, Veil of the Silent there as well. And then this really kind of useless metric, but, but interesting nonetheless is that taking the, the jump event, 
we have if you, if you jump, be it through Stargates or catalog jump drives, uh, we lock everything you have in your cargo and go, in, go recursively into all the containers so we know exactly what items are going through every jump. So taking only border jumps between regions, then we can do some fun stuff like the trade balance of regions. How much are they importing and how much are they exporting? And this is the trade balance in, <clears throat> in September. And the Citadel is at the top meaning that it's the highest exports over imports. It's a net uh, trade balance. And the forts is at, at the very bottom there, just accumulating assets at, extensively. So the, the, the imports into the forts just far exceed the exports. And then we can look at the same thing, but instead of taking the value of the items being, uh, being moved between the regions, taking the, the, yeah, the cubic meters of it. So we can see, looking at that graph, uh, I know it's not that clear here on, on there, but pure blind placid, are, there's a, a lot of stuff that's being uh, imported into these regions uh, in September, in terms of just cubic meters. Uh, Declan, Cloud Ring, Derelict are exporting the, the highest amounts of, of stuff. And then I made this graph, which is definitely going to make, make it into the, the monthly economic report, just summarizing everything I went through in a single graph, taking the top uh, 20 uh, regions by trade value and just showing you how they compare uh, with trade value, production, destruction, mining, net imports, exports, things like that. And being in Vegas, it's interesting to look because we can look into down into individual items. And I looked at the net imports and exports of exotic dancers. <laughs> and domain has the far, by far the highest uh, net imports and of female exotic dancers. It's really interesting also to see a wormhole region there in the fourth place. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I saw this, like, I mean, I know it can't be lonely in, in wormhole space, and so this is completely understandable. <laughs> and then, like, I had to take a male uh, dancers as well, and they're just piling up in forts. <laughs> Uh, there's some bias there on, I don't know why female, t male, female dozens are piling up as, as much, but this is definitely interesting. And seeing two other wormhole regions there as well. <laughs> it's, so there's, there's stuff there. And you can also see that one of the wormhole regions is actually a huge uh, exporter in a way in, in, in September, meaning maybe they had to evacuate a lot of uh, dancers. I don't, yeah. I'm, I don't know the full details behind this. All right. And this one here is, uh, I think a lot of you guys have been waiting for this because this, there's a lot of things here you've never seen before. So this is the complete summary of ISC, sinks, and faucets in ETH in 2015. I'm going to zoom into this a little bit, fancy animations. This is actually PowerPoint, and not hard work. Um, so starting September, in the beginning of September, we had 870 trillion ISK on active accounts. Then we had 63 trillion coming in through, fa through faucets, uh, 30 trillion coming in through sinks, going out through sinks, and then 26, 26 trillion going out through just account deltas. So accounts coming and going into, or player accounts, that is. And ending at 876 trillion. So that's, that's a lot of ISK that's active in the system. And going over the biggest faucets, bounty prices being the top one, that's not really surprising. It's at, at roughly 30 trillion, 31 trillion a month in September. Uh, 
NPC market commodity. This is uh, wormhole loot on, on NPC pre-orders. This is at 15 trillion in September. Uh, then we have incursions coming in in third at 8.3 trillion. And then the, our good insurance company, their fourth, uh, fourth largest faucet at 4.7 trillion and 2.2 leaving as well since, it, since you have to pay for your, your, uh, your insurance. Now going down into the sinks, the LP store is the biggest sink at 6.2 trillion. Uh, skills on the market at 6 trillion. Transaction tra tax at 4 trillion. Uh, blueprints, 2.8. Broker fees and manufacturing fees, office rental fees and so forth. And as you can see, this is a huge list of everything, but uh, the biggest ones just uh, far exceed the, the, the small ones. And I thought it would be really interesting also to look at just how ISK is uh, accumulating in the economy. And this is not just all ISK, this is ISK on active accounts. And this line here I'm going to start with is the uh, total ISK on, on corporation wallets. It's one point. It's 187 trillion. And do you see that, that huge dip there in, in August 2014? Anyone remember what happened then? No one. All right, summer blink. <clears throat> so you can, see, you can see that huge drop there. And here is the line showing uh, the is on, on active characters, and this is 750 trillion. And the total here, as uh, when I made this graph, is, was 880. Yeah, you can't actually see it, but, but as you can see, it's just accumulating a lot. And interestingly, you can also see the, a lot of the ISK that went out with Summer Blink then came back into characters, just, just people getting uh, their ISK back. Sorry? Summer blink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that 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 whole thing, that that event. Um, I want also to include this metric, which is the velocity of ISK. This is if you if you take the total ISK traded in on Eve markets uh, divided by the active ISK in Eve. So this has actually been going going down. So it could be indicating of, of people getting. Uh, they're accumulating a lot of ISK and not using it as much as, as they, they used to. So now sitting at around 0.5, so 50% of the, of the active ISK in the system is being traded, um, or is in circulation, it would be better to say. And this might be causing people to invest in things like, like Plex, which is Eve, Eve's gold standard, and we just went over 1.2 trillion, a billion in, in September. Not trillion. <laughs> well, I mean, and just for the, <clears throat> I mean, I was really interested to, to compare this to one other thing. And also just to have an excuse to make an animated graph as on FanFest. I want to compare this to Plex prices on Serendi. So this is. It's at 6.8 billion, it's Plex. And that's a lot compared to considering that, that a Plex in, on Serendi costs $9. But of course, these are two really different economies. And, and I could do a complete talk on, on comparing these two. There's some really interesting stuff there to see just how, how differently players are, are, are uh, using, using the, the EVE sandbox there and what, what items are most popular and things like that. And there, there was this one item that, that, that I saw that spiked, piqued my interest, and that was like a huge, hugely expensive item, especially compared to TQ. That was Golden Pots selling at 50 billion ISK. Like, I think you know, on TQ is it around three or four billion or something like that? So that's, this is something also with the nature of maybe of, of uh, just the culture of, in China. They, they, like gold is, has maybe more value to them in, 
like in, in the game than for TQ players. And like with the Plex prices and everything, you, you're asking yourselves, is there inflation in ETH? Like with all this ISK accumulating and like how is, how is the economy doing? So I made these slides on the price indices and just if you wanna read on how we're calculating the, the price indices, then you can check out the chain Las Peras uh, price indices. It's, it's called that. So we're taking, it's basically uh, taking the, the price index chains for this month. Uh, so it, it's the total trade volume of previous months uh, times the, the months well, you know what? I'm gonna just let you Google this, and <laughs> because I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna make this any any clearer than that. Right? <laughs> but it, when you read on it, then the reason we're using chain is because like the baskets of of between months are changing a lot. We we introduce new items and and do balance passes, so every month the your consumer basket could change. So we have to, we can't just take the consumer basket of, of back in 2003 and call that the, the norm today. Because you have so many new stuff added to the system like Tech 2 and Tech 3 and things like that. So starting off with the CPI, <clears throat> this is the consumer price index and you can see you're paying roughly 50% uh, of what you would pay for same items in, in, uh, in back in 2003. So that's there's definitely not inflation in, in EVE. Then we have the mineral price index, the primary producer index, and the secondary producer index. And I know you all of you, you're looking at all these spikes there and, and wondering what caused each of these spikes. Why was there certain uh, change in the trend here and there? And I also knew that you were maybe going to ask me about it. And like knowing the answer to that would mean to you'd have to know the each and every patch note of every release we did. We did because there, like if we change the, for example, mineral composition of, of blueprints, or we introduce, uh, we change something with the data cores, uh, change the way or is distributed in the universe. I mean, this, there are so many things that can cause some chains or spikes in, in, in its index. So I made these graphs, or this graph, it, it's showing the first thing is showing the weight, the total weight by category in the index. Uh, you can see, for example, back in 2003, in the, let's see, back in 2003, like the, the, the main uh, factor of the CPI was Tech 1 chips and implants. Then we've added all these new things into, all these new items into EVE, Tech 2, Tech 3, uh, PI came into the picture. So the, the CPI is now composed of so many other different things. And you can see today it's, it's a lot of uh, Tech 2 chips are really high up there, Tech 1 chips, uh, Tech 1 modules, skills, implants, and some commodities. And then a slightly different version of the same graph is showing what contributed, what was the biggest contributor uh, of a change. So if there's a spike up, what caused the spike? So you can, so instead of, I mean, I'm, I don't expect you guys to really get like the full picture of, of that graph in your head right now, but hopefully afterwards you're gonna check this out and, and really read into the graph and, and see all the little details here. So we can see, for example, that the spike here around the exodus in, the, in, in prices is mainly due to a huge spike in, in the price of, of implants. And then this curve over here, the, the downward curve that brought us basically into the plateau where we're in now, is uh, the dramatic drop in prices of Tech 2 modules. 
And that's because we introduced invention into the game. So you can really, you can really see, all right, this, the, the slope, the downward slope is because of, of price changes to TAC2 modules. Then you start to think, what, why TAC2 modules? Then you start to remember, okay, we introduced, uh, you can even, even check out the uh, patch notes of the, of the revelations uh, expansion, and you can see there that we introduced uh, invention. Here's the mineral price index, and it's mainly uh, like the main contributor there is, is uh, low-end minerals. And you can see that high-end minerals are getting more weight recently, because in 2015, I can't remember exactly what, but sorry? Okay. So back in 2000, uh, earlier this year, we uh, made, made it so that, that high-end minerals were being used a lot more in, in certain uh, items. So you could see that in there. And looking at the, its chains as well, the, there's a huge upward spike there in, um, in around, it it's actually says escalation, but that was in, in early 2012. And this is, uh, we're seeing just large spikes in, in low-end minerals and some temporary spike in high-end min, high minerals there. Uh, then in, then yeah, it was in Scylla. We had the, the change in, in the composition of high-end minerals of, of production. Right, then we have the primary producer index and you can see how, I mean, it was called planetary specialized com commodities now, but um, it obviously we didn't uh, release planetary interaction until later, but and just I put it into the same category regardless. So you can see just how much, how much of part of the primary producer index, the planetary commodities were back before we introduced uh, planetary interaction. And then, uh, but the, the main factors here are moon uh, materials. So you can see advanced moon materials and raw moon materials being a large part of the primary producer index currently. And these are the changes then. Then you can see uh, like the, the drop there shortly after revelations is mainly due to a large drop in, in data cores. So this is, as I, as I said, there are so many things and, and you can really see, uh, you can f estimate basically what chains and when uh, things happen that, that made the, the change permanent in the price indices. Then it's the secondary price index. You can see there uh, that salvage is a large part of that, and blueprints as well. And here, you can also see like the spike that caused this huge rise in, uh, in, in the secondary producer price index was, the, was PI. So you can see just the, the permanent spike there up. So this is, yeah, this is PI. Now, all right, this we have five minutes left, so that's, that's pretty good. So the future here for in, in, in the EVO economy is like, I'm gonna start with the, we're gonna start with the monthly economic reports, as I said, and start releasing now on a monthly basis a lot of the stuff I presented to you now. So you can just every month, you can track how the EVO economy is going, how much is being produced, mined, and, and so forth. So get, giving you guys more insights into what's happening in EVE. And an idea would be that instead of me doing this or, or uh, us doing this through, through Reddit or forums or whatnot, we would, we would maybe do this as, an, as a part of, of, of EVE Online. Maybe have this released by the Secure Commercial Commission. Uh, commission. And then uh, give you guys access to data sets as well. So you can uh, do your own graphs and your own analysis. And then, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in, in making everything in EVE player made and tradable. So uh, skills and blueprints, as you can see, those are really large part of, of 
uh, of sinks, ISC sinks, so we could compensate by raising taxes, for example. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then skill points, as as we've been has been a topic here. So that's uh, yeah part of making everything neat, uh, player made and trade. All right, so that is it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>